<laughs> My name is Kirk. This is a 6 to 7 o'clock weekly meeting we do for the jail reentry boys. How many people in this room and girls? How many people in this room has been to jail before? Everybody in here. Cool. Um, if y'all noticed from last week, we're doing it a little different. We don't have a cameraman this week, so we're just kind of doing the ride type. I know those of y'all in the rides program can probably relate to the horseshoe. It looks like a pair of group. You can go ahead and place this on your participation sheet as it is on the board. Um, I tell you what we're going to do this week, man. It's all right with the participants because uh, we got some new faces. Uh, we'll start with Jeff and uh, go around and everybody just say your name. But I kind of want to do something different this week. And uh, since everybody in here has been in jail before, maybe you can tell these guys if you know what jails. Our focus jails are Richmond, Hanover, and Henrico. We'll also be doing something through with the Creek once that program gets started. But, uh, you know, if you just say, I'm Cricket, I have been the monkey, and Rico, and Richmond, <laughs> and uh, with that pass, you don't have to say that, just enough for one. You're coordinated, not going to be Yeah, my name's Jeff. Um, I have been the uh, monkey and Henrico, actually, on um, New Kent and some other various places throughout the state. Cool. What's up? I'm Ryan. Um, been all of the uh, all of the uh, aforementioned. So. <laughs> um, I'm Matthew, and I've been to him right ago in Hanover before there was a recovery tier, and I was actually at a state facility that tried to introduce people to recovery, but it wasn't, you know, didn't work. Cool. How you doing? I'm good. My name is Samantha, and I'm at Samantha. Um, I've been to Pamunkey and Marco. Cool. Oh. Mike, Attic. Mike, Mike. Mike. Been locked up in Maryland, North Carolina, Pamunkey, and Rico. A lot of more places, too. That's it. Cool. Hey, I'm Ashley. Hey, Ashley. I've been to Pamunkey, Richmond, and Rico. Welcome. I'm Ron, and Whoa. I've been from Virginia Beach City. Uh, Greensville and uh, Shawshank, which is uh, Powhatan. I'm Kurt and Kurt, uh, uh, Richmond and Columbia and a couple other places. I'm country dramatic. And I'm uh, country. If you're watching this, you've probably seen me at the gym. I'm glad to be here. Josh, Josh, Josh. And then pretty much Hanover and <laughs> I'm Matt and Attic. And hey, I'm Matt. One of the monkey spines. Mm -hmm. All that? Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> really? Oh. My name is Sean, and I'm one person in long term recovery from hey, Southern Sean. Oh. That's what I've been to. I've been in various jails, frequent a lot of them for monkey, Richmond, and I've also been to the state penitentiary. Tyler Attic, Tyler, Tyler. and the uh, Monkey, Riverside, Chesterfield, and Richmond. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tillman. I'm Tillman. Tillman. Various places, but uh, here, Richmond, Hanover. Cool. So, as you see, all of us been to jail. We, a lot of us been to jail, same jail y'all in. So, uh, basically, man, I just wanted to do that so that we could show y'all that we qualify for this meeting. And the good news is, man, is that we have this meeting on a regular basis, so when you guys come out, we can get you here. You know, it's really a cool thing, man. Everybody enjoyed the meeting last week? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's pretty much general consensus, man, you know. <coughs> doing the right thing, man, practices, recovery thing, you know, trying to do the right thing. Not coming back to the jails, you know, outside of this field. You know, we are uh, doing the right thing, we're having fun doing it. Uh, Tyler, I ain't trying to put you on blast, but you just got out of jail, right? Yeah. Tell us about that. Where did you get out from? Chesterfield. Uh, I was in a program called The Bridge, which is, uh, I mean, I wasn't used to that because I was used to, you know, McShane, which was a 12 step program. And this was like a program that got beat. Um, I don't know if anybody is familiar with uh, Drug Court or Core. We do the MRT. And that shit was real deep. I mean, it broke me down. I see it, man. So you gotta lie out. For the record, man, Tyler just moved to the recovery house, I mean, and that was the first thing that he did. He showed me the little book that he got from there, man. He was telling me how cool it was and how much different it was in the other programs he's been in. And uh, that's really cool stuff, man, for real. You girls, this is y'all's first time in the world. Samantha? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what brought you to the meeting today? To this meeting? To, to this meeting, yeah. Because I go to a, ever, to a meeting every night and I just wanted to share my experience and strength and hope that you can make it outside of jail and stay clean and live a good life. That's right. You're a hero. We're glad you made it. What about you, Ashley? Um, I just want to do something different. You know, try to help people get it out of jail. So I know what it's like. It sucks in there, man. Sometimes you get so hopeless in there. Like, man, I, you know, I know for me, I felt like that I wasn't good enough. I saw all these people coming in from H and I, you know, talking about how good life is and how easy it is to keep it simple, and you know, a bunch of other little quotes that they had, cliché. And I just didn't think I was worried, man. I wondered if I was capable. Of it. What do I want to tell us? Just, um, want to be supportive and uh, share that experience, sharing the hope, you know. Had a lot of experience in uh, relapse and uh, the recidivism rate out there because um, I know every time I've gotten out of the city or the penitentiary, it doesn't take long for that to wear off on me, you know. And uh, that that newness that you get when you get out, you don't have to wear shower shoes no more, and trays and all that stuff. And it's uh, back to your own will, other than the the COs or the deputies' will. But today I'm living as God's will, you know, for me to um, try and carry this message to the other addicts who are suffering, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been in and out of these rooms of Narcotics Anonymous for like close to 20 years. And um, the only clean time that I've ever accumulated was when I went away. You know, two years, seven months, eight months, 90 days, and I get back out and I, I feel like I, I get cocky and get complacent. And it lands me right back. And I go out and use, I don't really catch the buzz no more, I catch charges. You know what I'm saying? And um, hey, it's time to change, you know, being 43 years old and, you know, not being a spring chicken anymore. I wish I would have tried this earlier, you know. You got Maddie over here, you know, I don't need to push you out there, but he's young, you know. And you know, Josh, these young people, the kids these days are trying to get clean, which I definitely respect. Because yeah, they ain't no joke out there, man. You get out of jail. And, you go back to doing the same old shit and get what you get, you know? It, I hear that if nothing changes, nothing changes. Right. You know, I'm trying to change today, so that's all I'm going to say. Thanks, man. Thanks for all sure. Sure. Yeah. Welcome, man. Welcome all y'all who are coming. <coughs> I'm glad you all guys came back this week, too. Man. The shows were committed to something. And, um, I, I mean, you know, I speak for myself, but I mean, I personally invited the majority of people in the room, and I can pretty much speak for them when I say we can make to exactly what you just said. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I know when I got out, man, it was kind of weird for me. And just getting out ain't nothing new to me. Just like getting in ain't nothing new to me either. It's, it doesn't change when, for me, when I get out, I still feel like it's a dream when I first get out. Y'all ever feel like that? Like it just ain't reality of you being home ain't setting yet when you first get home? How many of y'all still think y'all still like it? Tyler hasn't worn off yet. No. I figured you'd raise your hand. Yeah, for some of us, man, that's. <coughs> I tell you, man, it's like a dream. I still, and I've been out for a couple months now, but I still feel like I'm living a dream sometimes because I never thought that I'd be capable of accomplishing some of the things that I did. And before we go any further, man, it's for the sake of not breaking traditions, how many of y'all are participating in 12-step program? The majority of us. All right, so what we'll do when we're talking is just refer to it as a 12-step program if that was the path you chose, and don't say which 12-step program you did. We don't want to ruffle the trouble. Um, how many of y'all is staying out of jail by taking a different path. All right, well, everybody. Sorry, I'm not A different path. Okay, let me rephrase that. A different path besides a 12 step meeting. Can I get some hands on that? I already know what I want. You got, you're going a different way. I mean, you do a 12 step meeting, but you're also doing other stuff, right? Yeah. Tell us what that is. Um, you know, me, myself, personally, man, I'm a one again believer. Mm -hmm. Same Jesus Christ, and um, you know, that was first and foremost. But I, I, I used to choose 12 steps because of spiritual principles, and your know, spiritual principles is mm -hmm. conducive to righteousness and to, to leading life the correct way. You know, good is good, it's no way around it. You know, what I mean, that's the path that I chose. That's good, man. Anybody else doing anything? Y'all all just y'all stand out of jail just by going to 12 steps. I mean, I go, uh relate to what he said. I mean, I uh, go to church every Sunday and my dad believes in that, but I also have to incorporate it in my 12 step program because I'm trying to stay clean with just going to church and it doesn't fully with me as being an addict. So 
God has to use the 12 steps to help me recover and become a new person. So I use the 12 steps and it's not easier for me, but it would be easier for me to like, every time I go to church, like everything he says, like I'll relate that to the program, like, you know, the 12 steps and I just incorporate both of them in my life, God, and recovery on an even playing field in my life. Like, no one higher than the other. Like, I hope you can break both of my life. That's so cool. That really is cool. Um, well, for me, I mean, you know, I'm like you, man. Just doing one thing, 12 steps, or just going to church, it's for whatever reason, not enough for me, man. So I try to get active and involved with as much stuff as possible. This group, for instance, that's an example, y'all. You know, nobody realizes that this is helping us stay out of jail. Right? I mean, like, the dream. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Matthew? Don't you work for a treatment center? I'm not saying name, but um, you're pretty involved, right? Yeah, I, you know, I work at a recovery organization. Um, I have another job. I go to church every Sunday. Um, you know, I'm Catholic, but I go to a Baptist church. I found God in a 12-step meeting. You know, but I've been doing the Catholic things since I was a little kid. Ain't never found it. You know, it was through the meetings is where I found it. <coughs> um, what I've learned in there, I take out everywhere. You know, and um, so like when I go to church, you know, they do the Bible and all that stuff. Like, you know, sometimes I can't, you know, I can't grasp that. But when they talk about Jane the Junkie, you know, and Black the Dope Dealer, you know, in the meetings, I can relate to that. You know, and that's how I found God. So, like, the same thing I learned in the room is the same thing I apply at church, man. I network with good people. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're not using drugs and they're not, like, their lives ain't unmanageable and all that stuff. And it's helped me, man. Like, I got a lot of people from the church, you know, um, that are in my network. You know, and one of the biggest experiences was having, you know, <coughs> these people in church come up to me and tell me that I give them inspiration and hope. Right. Knowing that I'm, they've dealt with, you know, you know, shoot dope, smoke crack, and all that stuff. And then to see me, you know, with multiple years clean and, and having two jobs and being accountable and dependable, it's like, wow. You know, I ain't really never look at it that way. Because I can only think I can help out other addicts, but that's not true. You know, we can just help out a lot of people. Right? What we learn. You know? <clears throat> All these principles that I learned in the 12th century, I find them in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. Um, I try to stay, like I said, I try to stay involved and stuff, man. This is just one thing that, you know, that a lot of guys in here do. But I'm sure, you know, if we had more time, that if we went around a circle, the guys that are watching this tape would see, man, that we, you know, none of us are sitting at home twiddling our thumbs, man. Cause, and my, is it safe for me to assume that most of the people in this room with high all the time they tend to get in trouble or get high or catch a charge or something, man? I ain't trying to go back, man. And nobody in the circle, just half circle, is trying to go back either. Um, so I got a 12 step meet, 12 step group that I'm involved into, and uh, I do this, and I do some community service work. And I'm assistant manager of the recovery house that I live in. And I work, but you know, beyond those things, which keep me plenty busy, I hold doors for people, I ask them how is their day and really care about their answers. And uh, even though my teeth is fucked up, I smile as much as possible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? Those things keep me clean, I can't understand why, but they keep me clean, man. I don't, know, I don't get in control, man. It's crazy how this shit work country, you could be involved too, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm straight out the uh, dirt right now coming from work, but I mean, I came here because I got to be here. Man. I mean, I get along with all these people because I can relate to y'all. That's why I came up to this meeting instead of the other one. I feel I can stay more sober being involved with people that I recognize and that I'm comfortable with and been through the same experiences like Matt was just saying. You know, and it just feels good to know that there's somewhere I can call home now rather than the streets. Yeah. You know, I live in a recovery house. I work. You know, I take care of my daughter and I do what I have to do. And, you know, I got a sense of accomplishment I never had. I'm somebody today. This shit feels good, man. And, like, it's one of the magic ingredients, man, for me, for doing right, you know, and not coming back to jail, is that I do things that healthily make me feel good. And when I feel good, I don't have to see drugs to make me feel good. And the more good I feel about the things I do, the more I want to stay clean. So mm -hmm. it kind of works for me, man. Um, how many of my show of hands are in a recovery house or have been to a recovery house? So, damn, 
most everybody here took that back. Sean, ain't you like a parent leader yeah. in your recovery? I'll tell us a little bit about how that works for you. Um, it's being a leader, it's, it's all based on my service work. Right. And that's what I see my satisfaction in now because of that, that's basically the, what I've been chasing all my life. Mm -hmm. You know, through the drugs, looking for the drugs and, and for women and, and for money, all those things. I, I, I chase that feeling that I, I, I use Matt for an example. When Matt called me and reached out for me, and you know, he, he needed to get back in recovery, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I was giving him, he was in a dark place, and I was giving him information based on me, and I was encouraging him, and, and he went to McShane, he came in that day, you know, off of, off of some encouragement that I was giving him, you know, and when I, when I called and checked that he was in recovery, and he said he was doing great, man, the feeling that I got from that, man, it's nothing compared to what man, I'm talking about, it's, it, it, it's nothing, and it was no strings attached, and it wasn't nowhere near to, 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 to like celebrate it with me, that the joy I had inside, and I wasn't doing it for show or nothing, but the feeling that I got from knowing that he was he was safe, that he was back, and he got another shot at life from the spot that he was on that phone, man, it's, it's nothing compared to it, man. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and I feel that's the ultimate feeling, man, is to serve, man, and, and, and to, to have the joy, man, to help one another. And I believe that's the purpose of individuals, man. You know what I mean? On, on the planet, that's everybody's purpose, man, is to serve one another, man. You don't have to be here one another. I like that, man. You know what's cool, man, for those of y'all that don't know Sean and Matt? Where, tell them where y'all at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, I'm working on a program. That's yeah. pretty cool, man. They met in jail. And he's the first, when Matt, when the shit hit the fan for Matt, the first person he called was a dude he met in jail. That's, that's pretty cool, yeah. man. How many of y'all can relate to the fact that this, you know, not this group per se, but like your networks that you have is like a family for real. People actually care about each other and stuff. Brian, I know you're right too. Tell, tell us about your network, man. Uh, we, ain't, we, ain't got no, we ain't got no time to talk about all that. <laughs> I mean, for real, because for me, that's like, um, you know, like, 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 like the program of, that I'm involved with, mm -hmm. um, it's got the 12 steps, and then the other side, that's the program that we work to fix us, right? And then the, 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 the rooms is the social part because, you know, my disease got me to a point where I was isolated. I didn't know how to operate in society. You know, I forgot how to do all that stuff. I forgot how to be a friend. Because if you didn't have something, if I, I, I couldn't get nothing from you, then I ain't want to have nothing to do with you. I could manipulate you or whatever. And so I had, I had lost that. And so coming in here, man, and building a friend, like, you know, Matthew's, um, you know, one of my sponsors, uh, Matt's one of my sponsor brothers. I got a big sponsorship family. Um, you know, I got tons of, I mean, everybody in this room, not, not everybody, but for the most part, the majority of the people in this room, I see on a regular basis and mm -hmm. talk to outside the meetings for a while, before the meeting, and then after the meeting. Some of them we hang, I hang out with, go to dinner with. Um, kind of like um, Preacher was saying, you know, a big part of me too is that, a big part of my thing is like, you know, I got to be there to help other people, man. And I ain't talking about just when they're struggling. I'm talking about like, we're getting high. I'm talking about when they're struggling with life. Like, yeah. Hey, man, I got to. You know, I got this going on with my girl, and I don't right. know what I'm doing. You know, and for those of y'all know I'm married. Like, not that I'm on any type of plateau, but, you know, I got a little experience with that. Because we've been together eight years, and, I don't, and we're both of us in recovery, so I don't walk through that that stuff. Um, I don't know, man. You know, it's just the, the network thing for me, and, um, you know, it has become a family. Like, like I, I'm close to my family, but those of us that are older know that when we get older, you know, I got kids, my brother got kids, my sister been out of town. Like family kind of the dynamic changes when you get old for my for me anyway. And so um, now it's like I got a different I got a different set of people that I talk to on a daily basis and they got that, that, that understand me, man, and they love me. You know, um, I mean I you know, since I've been clean this time I have not went without anything. You know, and a lot of it has to do with um, you know, the people in the rooms and I ain't trying to um, say to come to recovery to get you a job from somebody but like let me tell you something since 2009 every job every place i've lived all my friends have came from you know the fellowship that i choose to be in and um i mean it's just amazing man what it's done for me in my life you know the, the people i've met you know, 
I mean, it's, like I said the other day, man, it's a movement going on right now out here, man. It's, a, it's, it's something going on, it's happening, and when you become a part of it and you get to feel it and see it, um, man, ain't nothing, ain't nothing like it, you know. Uh, That's good, man. Thanks for that, man, for real. Um, yeah, network thing is cool as shit, man. To be honest with you, huh? I talk to most people, and of course we got some newcomers that I've just met, but I talk to most people in this room on a regular basis. Some, some of these guys I talk to on a daily basis. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, you know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine type of deal. I'm going to do some shit, I'll call them, they're going to do some shit, they'll call me. And we try to help each other as best we can. Um, and you brought up something, though, about jobs, man. I kind of want to talk about that, too. Because, uh, you know, a lot of us in here is working. But, you know, see the guys in jail, y'all remember when y'all was in there. A lot of us got in there, we weren't working. You know, a lot of us. Some of us were working, some of us got in trouble everywhere. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> some of we all got different paths, man. Different paths took us to where we were, and different paths get us to where we at now. Man. So I kind of want to go around the circle, man, and talk about <coughs> if we're working, and you don't have to say what company you're working for, but maybe like just, you know, hey, I'm cricket, and I do maintenance work on loan properties. So let's start with you, Tim. Huh. First of all, get a job, no matter what kind of job it is. Tell them again. A job. A job. Until you get what? A better job. D job. <laughs> a job. D job. D job. D job. D job. <laughs> now, one thing I got to say for the only way I'm going to get my D job back is because I'm here. Mm -hmm. Working for her. Right now, I fill gas, a mop, bathroom floors, and do what it takes. That's what I'm doing. But hopefully, in a couple months, go for the medical board and get my license back. And that's only because of the post that program. Right. So maybe, you know, awakening dreams because how's it go? Wall Street's awakening. Yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, it. That's, that's it. Uh, it's very true, just like the journalist. So you know, coming down the pike, coming down the pike. We can just continue. Thank you, man. Tyler, what about you? Want a job. I so, you know, anybody got a job? Yeah, I'm I'm starting this week, but Anybody got anything? I will take it. But I wanted to say one thing about the whole networking thing. I mean, so far since I just got here in what, two days? Country's looked out for me, Ron's looked out for me, and of course Mike's looked out for me. So I mean, the whole networking thing and friends and people treating me like family. It's crazy. And I appreciate it. So that's all I got. Hold on, man. Don't discount yourself. Because for the record, Tyler came straight out of jail and came straight to a recovery house, man. Did he? Straight. Yeah. I mean, that day he went to a recovery house, right? Yeah, I actually, I was selfish and didn't want to come, but uh, you know, the only help I, you know, was getting was family. And they said, I mean, if you want the help, and I, you know, and it was crazy because they came and visited me the week before I got out, and they, you know, put it all on me. And uh, the next that night I had a meeting, and it was all about acceptance. <coughs> acceptance. So I had to accept it. Crazy. God does work in mysterious ways. This man didn't even eat his first meal after he got out of jail. He got at 11 o'clock, didn't even go get nothing. He came here. I, know. I came up here and we grouped and eat all afternoon. And I fed him because I was like, man, you haven't eaten nothing? He's like, no, I needed this. And so that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. The good news about Tyler is, man, said he wants a job. And I, I pretty much tell you, he's going to get one as long as he you know, keeps doing the right thing. He'll get a job. That stuff coming, man. Y'all agree with that, man? It seems yeah. like yeah. shit. The good shit just seems to happen when you do good. Blessings mm -hmm. in every corner. Every, yeah. every time you turn around. Thanks for sharing, Tyler. Sean, what about you? Tell us something about your job experience <coughs> since you've been home. Um, man, I had a, um, I ran into some adversity on my job that I had. Um, you know, I'm keep it a little, I ain't gonna tell y'all I work for, but. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, it was addiction on my job, man. So I was facing incarceration, and I was facing my sobriety was, was being compromised. Mm -hmm. Not saying I had the desire to use, but you know, it was just it was it was just too compromising the whole situation. You know, you come to find out, you know, my you know my employer he was addicted to crack, and and you know, a couple of guys that I was working with was addicted to heroin. things that was insane. And you, and you see these things when you got a clear head and you know you see all the insanity 
it was going on, like, you know, he had guys driving a company vehicle with no driver's license, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> And I'm riding with these guys, and then it was, you know, drugs on the truck, a lot of these guys driving around with, with no driver's license, you know what I mean? So they get stopped or whatever, you know, and, and then, you know, they had tenant windows on the vehicles, and, you know, I'm going to show you some, some things that was insane. For instance, we driving around in the vehicle, they had tenant windows on it. The boss had a, 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 he had a permission to drive around by this letter, so if the cops stopped him, he just presented the letter because of his eyes, so the tent will, you know what I mean? But the other guy that's driving doesn't have the letter. Okay. So when it's raining outside hard, we have to ride around with the windows down. And you know, that's insane. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he's scared to roll the windows up because we might get poor because of the tent. That's all, you know what I mean? Who does that, man? You know, And that's 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 insane, man. So you know, my, 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 my freedom was being compromised and you know my sobriety you know some people would take that for a dream you know what i mean that your employer smokes right so you know i can make some money <laughs> or whatever you know what i mean all types of stuff but you know i i found that i had to walk away from that situation and now you know i had to pay my rent you know i mean i have children i have child support you know i have a lot of things man but my sobriety and my freedom was not worth that risk man whatsoever man so I had to I had to I had to man walk away from a job that was paying me some good money man I was making over five hundred dollars a week you know and I had to walk away from it man and that's the hardest thing that I ever had to do you know what I mean to just walk away from my welfare like that man right. you know and, <laughs> and you know it's by the grace of God that I'm being given grace right. you know what I mean in 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 the spot that I am, you know what I mean? But it was all based on the path that I chose to do the right thing. So the grace has been shown, man, by me doing that. So, and I, now I have another job. It's like one, it's something small, but it's a moving company. And I'm basically on call, so I'll be like working anywhere for two to three days a week, but it's 12 bucks an hour. But I can, you know, I'm grateful for it, man, as well. But. Well, thank you, man. That's yeah. news to me. I didn't know you got a new job. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask you something, like, uh, Cause you know Sean was dealing with what he was dealing with, and uh, you're kind of freaking out about it. So when you realized that you had a problem on your hands, did you sit there and try to, you know, discuss it with the committee in your head, or no? Nah, I, I, I didn't lean to my own understanding whatsoever. You know what I mean? Because my best thinking of getting me in jail. You know what I mean? I'm allergic to drugs, and when yeah. I say I'm allergic, I break out in handcuffs every so, time. Every time, you know. So I, I, I seek, I seek a new direction. You know what I mean? And I, I called you, I called John, you know, even I had more clean time or whatever, you know what I mean? But, I, you know what I mean? God grant me the wisdom to use, man, you know what I mean? To discern, to choose the right direction to go. And I called John, I called you, I called my pastor, you know, and, you know, to, to, to for, for more encouragement. And, you know, while y'all guys give me confirmation, it wasn't hard to make that choice to go ahead and do what I need to do, you know what I mean? That's cool, man. I'm so glad you made the right decision, man. See, it's cool, you know, when we're clean, we're not all, our job is not all cloud, we move around all the substance, we make good decisions, somehow that works out. Ain't that pretty cool if you clean, you yeah. have to do the right thing? Yeah, it, it's, it's good not to make decisions and choices in desperation, you know, because you usually make the wrong decision and the wrong choice when it's in desperate time, man. I used to do that a lot, you know, and I heard John speak on, you know, the character defects and the shortcomings, you know, and I used to, I used to exercise that all the time when I got out, man, is you would take a bad situation and it becomes worse, you know, and that's like, you know, the character defects is the flat tire, but the shortcoming is driving on the flat tire, man, you know what I mean, so, you know, and that's that way that I always took, man, in one year. I didn't stop till I was locked up or till I tore some all the pieces, man. You know, and I'm glad, man, I don't have to make them choices today like that, man. You know that. I can do it the right way. Mm -hmm. That's cool, man. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Matt, Matt, you came out and went straight to the program, Sean. Did you, were you able to get a job? Well, uh, my story is a little different than Tyler's. When I got out of jail, I did not come straight to recovery. All right. Um, towards the end of the, or towards the, <clears throat> my release date, I 
accepted I was an addict to an extent, but I thought I could handle drinking and then if I stay away from the wrong people, I'm not going to use drugs. Right. Quickly found out within the first week that that wasn't the case. I started using again and I managed it somewhat for a little while, had a uh, job in electrical work, whatever, but it just slowly went downhill. So a little bit under three months, I uh, had called Sean during a rough time and I went up to a recovery organization and moved into a recovery house and all that. And then um, once I did that, I didn't rush into working. I like got my mind straight for a little bit, of, like um, 20, 30 days, something like that. And now I'm blessed with a pretty decent job doing construction type work and my boss is also in recovery, so that's an awesome thing too. Good. Sounds like a pretty good decision as far as picking your job. You know, that way you don't end up in a position like Rashawn was in a couple weeks ago. Uh, what you, Josh? Well, when I got up, I did the same thing how I did. I came straight to the pool, mm -hmm. the organization. And then the next day, I went straight to work for my dad. I do construction and work. And I mean, he works shit over you, too, don't you? All day. I know Josh's dad. He's a hard worker. That's good, though, because it keeps you busy, man. And actually, even though your relationship might be strained sometimes, it's actually revealing the bond between you and dad, even if you don't realize it. Well, I don't realize it. You just said to me, go to the place. So. He's tough, man. <laughs> He works here, you know, so you know, you make sure that you got your money to pay your bills and stuff. And you got a little spending money with the diet, so that's good. What about you, country? You dirty. Yeah. You gotta be working. Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. a plumbing and remodeling business. Sunday best. Going on my <laughs> work for Richmond Redevelopment Housing Authority for the past few weeks. We've been having those before in Fairfield. You know, I realized today, I said, man, it's the first time I've left the projects. And not spent no money except for the church. is cheap. It's the only money I spent. I had a good day. Yeah, yeah, but the struggle's real, man. I'm looking around on break, and I'm seeing the hustle, and I'm seeing the fiends, I'm seeing the, the desperation that's still out there, man. It, it makes it very real for me. But I also know, at the end of the day, I come here, I don't have to live like that no more, you know? And that's comfortable for me right now, and I like that. So I'm just glad to be here. That's cool. Country works, country works his ass off, too. Man. You work for your dad, too? Yeah. Man, another guy works for his dad, man. Um, and I ain't trying to put you out there. Don't nobody bum no money for me when you get out. But country makes pretty good money. And here's, here's the good thing. Man. <laughs> he, look, he spends a lot of it on the guys and his network and shit, man. The other day, man, we had uh, Tyler got out the other day. We had, what was it, six people in the truck with us. Country bought food. Tyler hadn't eaten no street food yet. So country asked him if he wanted anything to eat. And he went to McDonald's. But, you know, basically whatever cash he had in his pocket on food for everybody in the truck. So that's pretty cool, man. You're spending your money on piles of shit fortune. No man can't get this money. That man can't get that money. <laughs> Unless he works at McDonald's and still <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Kurt? You getting any work yet? Yeah, I, I started working about a week after I got out. I didn't, you know, I had I had two met a dude in jail that, you know, he was into the word and everything like that. And we had gotten close and everything. He said, you know, he could hook me up with a job when I got out. So I called him the first week and I couldn't get in touch with him and finally I got in touch with him and sure enough he got me a job and it's, it's a good job, I do roofing and shit and um, like we, me, him and the boss man and then one other guy, our salesman actually do like a Bible study every morning that's before great. we go out. You know, so that's, it really starts my day and everything. So I, and they know I'm an addict too. And the other dude that, you know, hooked me up with a job, he's an addict. So me and him can talk with the other two guys, you know, and they're all involved in church. So, man, it's, I don't make too much, you know, but I mean, it's enough. It's getting me by. And, you know, I'm just, I've been spending money ahead in my pocket. I can get stuff that I want to get. I don't have to worry about how I'm, how I'm going to get high. It's, it's awesome. Like, my life today, I wouldn't change for anything. Yeah. Thanks for the program. Thank you so much for sharing. Three weeks ago, he got out, man. He's doing his thing. When was your first day that you showed up? Was it your first or your second? Well, the first day I got out, I got drunk. And then oh. the next day, I came in and I was like, man, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I thought I could just drink, you know, I thought I could just drink, but then I, I woke up the next day and was like, nah, they had me. <laughs> so I've been hitting the meeting pretty much every day since then. Right. Yeah, so he showed up at this same <coughs> facility that was sitting there right now, man, and he reached out for help. 
and he's been back ever since, man. I'm really impressed. What about you, Ron? You working? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I came uh, came here out of Richmond back in uh, August August 16th. Um, I had a mishap on August 2nd. I had an OD for the first time and died. Mm. And um, mm. I went to a detox center in Virginia Beach for about seven days. When I got out of there, I um, was introduced to a program here in Richmond. Um, so I came out here to the program, and after the 30 days when uh, in this program, they, they encourage you to get work. And luckily, I've got a trade under my belt doing HVAC, and um, I found a position. I've uh, been working for a couple weeks, and um, you know, I'm real grateful for it. So, you know, like my man said, you know, you got to get a job before you find the job. You know, so it's, it's all about being humble and just going out there, you know, whether you got to flip burgers or you know, wash cars or whatever it is, it, it, it's filling that void like we were just talking about. Because that idle time's a killer, man. I know it is for me. You know, I sit around and get in my head and, you know, it's a wrap. So, you know, I'm real grateful to be back out there in the field, you know, doing service work, um, you know, troubleshooting the, the heating systems and stuff like that that I, I really enjoy doing. Um, so, I, I'm really stoked on it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm staying busy. Cool, man, because it's helped you stay clean too, right? Yeah, you know, the, the, just like he was saying, um, you know, the guys that I work with um, happens to be in recovery as well. You know, he's got a good amount of clean time. And that's the important thing is, like, I've got to decide, you know, like Sean was saying, if it's no good for me and then everybody, you know, you sit in a barber shop, you're going to get a haircut eventually. You know what I mean? So if yeah, people out there getting high and drinking, it's just no good for me, you know. No matter how much clean time I accumulate, there's always that chance to hit that big old fucking button. And once I do that, you know, I'll be sitting back in jail. And uh, you know, this it's not gonna happen. Not today, a day at a time, man. That's all I can say. Thanks, so, so. You work in action? I actually start my job tomorrow. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. That's fun. yeah. <laughs> Tyson out off I stay with on first three. Yeah. Oh, man, they they hire felons. Yeah. They're hiring now. You can put an application up on I'm it's telling like you, man. Instant. I put an application last week, got hired on Wednesday. It's places out there, man. It's places out there for people like us. I know I'm sure you. You gotta work, Sean. You gotta work. But I'll tell you, actually, I don't know if you have you been up there and talked to the people up there yet? Yeah, I went up Wednesday and had an interview, seen a doctor, passed a drug screen, got a job right up there. And the good thing about Tyson and other companies like that is, man, they hire people like us, people that have been in jail, even those of us that have been convicted of felonies. And I mean, you know, they don't judge us by it, man. They don't even ask if you're a felon. Oh, words. Yeah. And we're going to give you an application. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go online. There's no excuse for them. Got to get to work. Also, do they still, they used to provide transportation. They, they used to have like a bus or something. Yeah, they months. still do. They take out your paycheck. You get paid every Thursday. Mm. That's awesome. Oh, like we really really I told y'all not to take my job. So I mean, you, you know, it's, it's work out there, man. You just gotta, you gotta look around for it, man. It helps if somebody's helping you too, man. Yeah, you I know? got a lot of people behind me though. Like my dad, he helped me get a job. Do you think they'd be behind you if you were still fucking up doing the things you used to do now? Absolutely not, right? No, I probably wouldn't even pass the drug test. How does that feel? It felt awesome because two other people were in there. I was the only one that got the yeah. job because I was the only one that had it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How about that? That's all right, man. Congratulations. <laughs> that is. That's pretty cool. Mike, have you found any work yet? I'm between jobs at the moment. Super <laughs> Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm doing enough to make ends meet, but you know, I struggle with the fact that I'm too good to do this job, or I'm too good to do that job. Um, I'm not doing no manual labor, things like that. So I it's, that, it's that a real humble experience. Hey, we relate to that. I thought the same thing. Yeah. But look, ain't you considering you consider you might go back to school or something now, right? I am. Uh, I just finished up studying for a certification though, that I plan on testing for before Thanksgiving. Uh, and then, yeah, I am probably a semester and a half away from completing my degree. So, going back to school, finishing all that stuff, but, you know, it's just like, I just feel like I'm above certain work, and I know that's a problem of mine, but, you know, I'm trying to deal with it. 
Hey, look, that's I, me being honest, you know. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's what I want you to do up here. I tell you, I was locked up with my, in fact, that's where I met him in jail. And uh, I got to tell y'all, man, I ain't trying to, yes, I am. I'm never trying to put your business in there. But Mike, man, had his, his family send him textbooks in for the field that he's, you know, trying to work in. And I mean, he, every night in his free time, he was in that book, man. Read, remember y'all? What is the computer stuff, right? Information technology. Yeah, man, I can't, the only thing I'd like to do is cut it on uh, Google shit and surf porn and stuff like that. I'm telling the truth, man. I'm telling the truth. That's the truth. Three of y'all is watching this film, and it's probably a lot of y'all recognize me because I'm definitely a recidivist. Y'all know I don't, I don't cut no corners, man. That's it. All I know how to do is cut it on Google shit and surf porn. And anything else beyond that, Somebody got to teach me. <laughs> working? Um, no, I'm not working right now, but I want to let you know, like, the struggle is real for the black people are too. Because of, uh, because of my network, you know what I mean? I have a sponsor who I rely on for every thought that I have. Because first thought wrong, you know what I mean? My first thought is always wrong. You know, I wanted to take a job. It was at night time, mm -hmm. which first out in fact my meetings and I've been to a meeting every single night. You know what I mean? So I've been out of jail, I've been out of jail before um well I got like seventy four days you know, yeah. so um I've been to meeting every night since the day I called my grand sponsor and she told me you're gonna call this woman, she's gonna be your sponsor, so you can discuss and help you stay clean. And I said, Alright. But um it was gonna affect my meetings and they served alcohol and alcohol wasn't I didn't think it was a problem for me but every time I drank my drug was at the bottom of that took the alcohol and I was having a bad day that day and I don't couldn't tell you whether I could stay clean or not but because I took the suggestion from my sponsor I'm still clean today. Um by the grace of God. And since then my, I work for my grand sponsor, um, and she needs help, and she pays me $12 an hour. I'm going to tell you how good God is, because I ran out of money. The day that I ran out of money, my phone rang, and she said, you want to come work for me? And I looked up, and I was like, God, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. And her husband owns a company, and they're all in recovery, and they don't have a home group. And I have a home group today, like, whoa. And, um... <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm committed, like, okay. Um, and they said, so I've got three more months and I've got a job I'm working there. And because I've been so, doing so good, I'm not above anything. Like, <laughs> throw me in a ditch and I'll dig it as long as you pay me. Like, I, like, I mean, I'm the only girl in the whole family, so I'm used to doing all that. But, you know, because I've been doing so good in their house, you know, he's talked about hiring me before I get six months. So I'm really excited about that because, you know, God's just doing things for me in my life that I couldn't do for myself. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Like, I've been applying for jobs and had opportunities, but I feel like when God's ready for me to get a job, he'll you know, put it in my way because I feel blessed that I've been able to focus on my recovery right now because without recovery I wouldn't have a job or I wouldn't have life. So without twelve step fellowship I can't have any of that. So I'm really grateful to be able to focus on my recovery and focus on um getting my life together because all I knew how to do was live life get time today and I knew how to live this life the greatest way. And I don't need money, you know, really today. So I'm cool with that, you know. All I need money for is cigarettes and my dad cooks food for me, so I'm good with you too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I mean, you're right. good. Like, I come to a meeting every night and they go home and eat and go to bed. And, you know, during the day, I go do some service work, call my sponsor, and she's like, all right, you can go do this. And I'm like, I'm going to hang out with people, like fellowship, hang out with people in the fellowship, like uh, surround myself with people who are living a new way of life and want to stay clean and want to live a new way of life. You right. know what I mean? So it's like, and the good thing about the program is there's people in here that work.
work in a field that I know how to do. You know what I mean? And they know who I am and they see my face and see that I'm committed and say, see that I'm living a new way of life. So they'll be like, hey, Samantha, like, you want to come work for me? Mm -hmm. And that's just like God putting people in my way. And I'm just like, all right, I love you. You know, like, that's what's good about the program. I love that because there's so many people in here who truly care about us. Whether we've been to jail, institution, prison, you know what I mean? They, they don't care because they've been there too. Like all of us relate to each other, so they just want to give us a chance, you know? So I'm just excited. Job or not, you know, I'm not really trying to stay home with them because I'm going to get far, but I know like I have faith in my high power that he's going to take care of me no matter what. So, but, I'm really glad you shared on this, man, for real, because, you know, ain't, of course, all of us in this circle don't have a job, man, but ain't it pretty cool how, like, when you do the right thing, just stuff just yeah. seems to be provided for you? Like, I mean, like, Michael, Mike was doing good, but I just took a drug test yesterday, passed the final colors. Um, and actually, man, it's pretty cool, too, because I actually talked to Michael's mom yesterday, too, and his mom and dad, man, some more personal shit, you know, but I do that to you because you're my friend. Uh, <laughs> like so many of the rest of us, man, we've disappointed our parents over the years and stuff, man, and we've put a lot of stress and strain on that on that relationship, man. Mm -hmm. But just in a you know, couple months that Mike has been doing something different, chasing a new way of life and stuff, man, they, their opinion is quickly changing on me, man. They're real proud of him. I don't know if they tell him enough, but they definitely told me yesterday that they're proud of him. I got the green light for him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh yeah, that's good too because actually his mom and dad is active with a couple people. They don't mind talking to his network too, man. So that's cool, man. But Samantha, that's 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 awesome, man. And you'll get some work. And look, the truth is, everybody that's watching this film is in jail, man. Ain't in jail for drugs. Everybody in this circle tonight, you know, we all had a drug problem. And, you know, 99% of the time, all drugs is what led us to go in jail. Yeah, drug problems. <laughs> right. Yeah, I got caught in this thing. Ain't that crazy? But all of y'all ain't in there for drugs and stuff, man. But that's cool, man, because y'all are welcome at this meet, too. And to be honest with you, man, you'll find work in these meetings. Like, for instance, had we noticed Samantha was willing to dig a ditch the other day, country would have put your ass to work. He was in the whole building. So come on out when y'all get out when you come to the meet. Matthew, you working? Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got two, yeah, I'm working. I'm blessed, man. Like, um, work this program, blessings come. I got two jobs. But you know, like, I was listening to Cricket, and when he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, when we got locked up, like, some of y'all had jobs, some of y'all didn't, some of y'all stole from you, stole from your jobs. And that took me right back. Because I remember my, my mindset of how I went when I was locked up, because this disease is coming back me. And like me, I, I have my own business, right? I put it in books because that's what I told myself. Um, like I lived in my barbershop. Like there was no shower in it. I lived in it. Took bird baths, right? Um, I claimed I had business, but what I was doing is I was stealing packs from people, putting dummies in it, and selling it to pay my electric bill, to pay my rent. I was living to use and using to live. I was finding ways and means to get more, all right? But when I went to jail, I had all these people that used to look at me to get him stuff, right? So they're like, damn, he's getting money. Yeah, there's man, he's locked up in here, right? So like, I fed on that shit. Like all of a sudden my disease is coming, right? And I'm sitting there thinking like, yeah, so I'm unique, special, and different compared to everyone else here. Like if you wasn't owning a business, or you wasn't doing nothing out there, I was better than you, right? It took me a long time to realize like I was just the same. You know, I was an addict, man, you know, just using, doing whatever it took to get there, right? Um, and I didn't want to admit that. Right, so like I know there's people watching people sitting there locked up right now. So I'm like, man, I had this out there. I ain't like these people, mm -hmm. right? And um, you know, I always had this euphoric recall, right? Like when I think about um, all that, it was about 17 years ago, you know? Um, and like that second year that I was like really getting into selling drugs and I was actually like had some money, you know, a lot. And um, that money was never enough. All right? Like, no matter how much I got, I always wanted more, so I, I found other ways to pursue trying to get it, and I never did. So, like, today, working two jobs, and I say that because I don't got a lot of money saved up. I got my needs met. You know, I can pay my rent. Yeah. I can pay my fines back. I can get my license. Right? I can go out to get dinner wherever I want. Yeah. You know, um, my girl loses her job, and I can afford to pay the bill. Right? And, and 
and that money that I have, um, I'm good with it. Right, right. You know, I even had stacks and like shoebox money, and I was never good with it. And today, that's the difference. But it took me a while, right? Like my mindset was messed up. I'm like, quick in country, no. They used to come to the barbershop and see how I was living. And when me and country were locked up, and quickly, we wasn't junkies, right? So I'm hanging out with a bunch of junkies. Right? And I love people that weren't doing as good as me because it made me feel better about myself. Yes, right. right. Yeah. So, like, in recovery, I got to be careful because I can do the same thing. Oh, yeah. You know, I can do the same thing. Like, I might not want to come to this meeting, right, because there's a bunch of newcomers and they ain't struggling. They're going to ask me for rides and all that shit. I don't want to do that. Right? Because I'm too busy. But that's not how I got where I'm at. Right? Mm-hmm. right? So when I hear Cricket say something, it takes my mind back and knows how my disease is coming back. Right? So, like, I'm saying all that, like, because I want us all to be reminded. Whether it was three weeks ago or three years ago. You know what I mean? Like how our disease works. And I'm like, I noticed someone's going to be watching this tape thinking the same shit and probably share it on it in the group. Yep. Right? Just like I did. Like I was better and different. Glorifying all that yeah. bullshit. Right? Humble and humility, man. It comes with this. And that's like, it's a humbling experience like being in here. Yeah, man, I'm working today, man. I can pay my bills, right? I look forward to my electric bill and my cable bill coming in the mail and I pay it that day. Like, and I get off on that. Yeah, I like that shit. And I can go out to eat. <coughs> you know? But half the time I'm too tired to do that stuff because I've been working all day. You know, but it's just a blessing, man, to come with that. So you go on our town next week, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That ain't free to go where you're going. Yeah, well, I, I, that. I mean, you know, I'm off labors, I can call my off not off, but you know, I'm off supervised, so I don't have to check in and stuff like that. You know, I got the license back, I can do all that stuff, man. And it's worth it. It took some time, man. It didn't happen overnight. You know, that wasn't the things that I was focused on when I got out. It was just not easy, right? I mean, how can I get to a meeting, right? I got to meetings, man, I met people, and all of a sudden, I'm cutting hair again, right? I'm like at a barbershop. Never thought that would happen because I know what comes with it. Right. But my boss has 50-some years in the program. Ooh. You know, so it's like, dang, I guess it's meant to be, you know? And um, this is great. That is cool, man. And you know, Matthew, he, he, does, he really does. I know him through, I know Matthew personally. He practices that humility thing a lot, man. But just for the record, man, you know, he works his ass off for real. He's, like I said, he works for the recovery community organization. And he works at a barbershop he's talking about. He got to be one of the best barbers that I've ever met in my life. Um, you know, he's out to tell you that, and I'm not trying to sell him. No free advertising here, but if he can make other dude like me look good, then he's got something to do. <laughs> Come on, Ryan. What are you doing, man? Oh, man. <laughs> I got a job. I got all this <laughs> You know, I just want to say this, though. Like, you know, in 2011, when I got clean, I was 31 years old. This was the first time I got any significant amount of clean. I was 31 years old. I had been locked up 80% of my life. I didn't have no trade. I didn't know how to do shit. But make a suit, make a swollen and shit. Right. Yeah, I was got them in there. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to fuck out the pickle. Shit, that's what you do. Shit, that's what you do. But that's real, right? Oh, yeah. So, so when I got out, I, I went to I went to the Salvation Army program. Um, and and while I was in there, I worked, you know, for free, pretty much. For 40 hours a week, with no money. And, um, and I, I had a chance to leave there while I was there. And, Thank God I had some people in my life, you know, this particular uh, spiritual the, the pastor there. He went to talk, he said, just stay, man. God got something for you, but he wants to see what you're going to do. So I stayed. Needless to say, I walked out of there and I got a job. Um, I was actually at a meeting, sitting on the steps. You know, y'all know how people do it, right? Yeah, I know y'all know too. People tell you, like, I'll get you a job. I know nobody will call you back. You right. can get your job working with me. Well, I met this dude that was like, man, I'll get your job working with me. I mean, you won't be making them in 1963 an hour. I was like, you know, it's all like a full of shit. Ain't no way. You know, mm-hmm. so I just kind of blew it off. But like when I got out of the program, I ended up getting that job, and um, and I ended up getting the union. I made a lot of money, uh, and, and did very good. I ended up making more than you know. My my, my scale went up. Um, but you know, kind of like like we was talking about, you know, that job is greater than money was. Like, see, my thing, I ain't never had that shit. You know? mm-hmm. So my financial financial um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, financial security to me is like a big deal. Like, like I ain't got no faith in the area of God gonna handle my finances. Like, I got to handle that shit. You know what I mean? And so um, I refuse to let that job go, and that's why I'm sitting here now with six months clean instead of five years clean. Right. You know, because that job put me in a situation that I was refusing to walk away from because I had never made money like that in my life. 
And so now I got a job making half that money, more than half, more than half of what I'm used to making. Um, but I work with somebody in recovery, man, and um, you know I work. Shit, I had three days off in the last month. You know I work as much as I as much as I want to, pretty much. Um, I got more money in the bank now than I ever had with that other job. That's right. You know. That shit's crazy. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, how I was making I don't know the week and I didn't even save shit. But now I make, you know, five hundred or so and I and I got, you know, I'm doing very well, man. And I, you know, and I'm not saying that for, for me, I'm saying that because, you know, the program and God, man, and God, you know, that's what this is about. People don't like that word, like higher power, whatever you wanna call it, but it's something out there that's got to me, man. And, you know, you know, since I ain't been since I ain't been um Use and medicines. I've been cleaning this town. I'm working with this guy now. I've been with him for like about a month and a half, right? But since I've been cleaning this town, I might have had three or four different jobs. One of them I had to walk away from because people was using. Mm -hmm. But I ain't never went without them. Like, I, as soon as one job over with, kind of like Samantha was talking about, people know me because I've been coming around a long time. I know people in the room. They see me put in the effort. Somebody gonna say, "Come on, I got you. Work with me for a couple of days, even if it's just a day or two a week." I <coughs> for me to get by, you know. And then um. And then now, like things, things, are, things are happening. I'm moving out of the recovery house this Friday coming up um, into a different environment. Like it's the next step towards getting a place, you know, with my wife because she lives in the recovery house. I'm living in the recovery house, so taking the next logical steps, man. And um, you know, just, 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 you know, I can't just turn over, um, you know, just, just this addiction to God. You know, I got to turn over everything. That means money too. You know, that means like. Like, like, you like, you know, I, 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 I want to, you let my pocket get low and say, you know, I'm like, I'm going to hold on to all this stuff I got, you know, I'm going to keep this, I got a kid, and then I, you know, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get that money, and, uh, you know, today, my, my, my uh, being clean is, is, um, not using is more important to me than, than money. I know that my shit might sound crazy to y'all, but, you know, if I start using, right, like, all the money I got ain't worth a shit. The government will get every penny. Yeah. I know. And, and then I'm so, a home, so I'm yeah, yeah, you know, charges and all that. So but yeah, man, you know, like I said before, every job I've gotten since 2010 to now has been from somebody that I met in the room of like the twelve step fellowship that I choose to follow up and, um, you know, and I ain't saying that, you know, you're gonna walk out and somebody gonna say, Hey, here you go, come work with me. No, I ain't like that. You gotta come out here and do some work. People see what you're doing, see what you're working, see where your mind is at, see you willing to do something different. And, and, and nine times out of ten people are willing to to give you a hand up, you know, not a hand out. So that's all I got. That's awesome, man. Uh Jeff, you shared last week that you had relapsed recently. Mm -hmm. Did that affect your job? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't have it anymore. <laughs> 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 it's, without saying the company name, is the people you're working for like what Sean, like what uh, Yeah, good uh, under comes in recovery. Okay. So he's really understanding. Um you know, I found that uh coming around the recovery environment, I can no longer use the excuse that I'm a convicted felon and I get a job. No, okay. For me. Oh, that's that's me. Yeah, that's right. Because when somebody sees me put in effort, I was out two weeks I had a job. A good job. It was, it, yeah, I mean, I mean, it made decent money. It was a full time uh, job. It was uh, being paid on the table, but it led me to another direction, to where I could get a job, to where I was, uh, you know, being a productive member of society and paying taxes. You know, so um, it felt really good. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I, I got, I moved on. I moved uh, to another county, and I stopped going to meetings, man. And um, you know, when I stopped going to meetings, I, it doesn't stay at the forefront. I stopped working the steps, you know, and. Um, I get lax, and um, for some reason I thought it might be a good idea to pick up. And, um, so it affected my job, affected the relationship with my girlfriend. Uh, well, it affected everything. It I mean, we go over that, if you name it, affected. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but by the grace of God, I did not die. Right. I knew exactly where I could come back to, and I had people that wanted me to actually come back. Um, and I didn't go to jail this time. This is the very first time I've been in recovery and didn't have to go to jail to be clean. Right, that's um, all. Right. So, this is this is really something special to me, um, but yeah, with jobs, man. I, and I got clean um, again, and I got my job back. Right. So, which is a, a blessing. You know, it's it's just it's amazing. Like you, everybody's in here saying, "You do the right thing, the right things happen." That's true. You know, if I, as long as I do the next right thing, you know, I know what the worst thing is. As long as I don't do that, I got a damn good chance. 
That's why you know. I don't have to make the right the, the right choice, but I know what the wrong choice is. <coughs> as long as I don't make that wrong choice, I got a better chance. That's so good, man. Thank you for sharing that. Um, like Ryan was saying, man, no, you're not guaranteed. You won't know it was guaranteed job coming out the gate, man. But, you know, it sounds like, man, for the most part, man, when we seek help and when we, you know, try to do productive shit and get involved, man, if people see we're doing that, that we're providing for them. You know, good stuff happens. That's a general consensus. It's just me. Um, we got pizza, man. There's nobody here pay for this pizza, man. Somebody. Knew we were having a meeting up there tonight and came with lots of pizza. Free, so I'm standing out there, free of charge, man. Yeah. And this ain't no rabbit pizza neither, man. I mean, <laughs> this pizza, what's that pizza guy on like, pizza and all kinds of shit. Hey, look, have y'all ever seen pizza with broccoli on it? <laughs> we ain't here, but I think it looks pretty good in there. <laughs> hey, look, there's something else I wanted to say too, man, y'all. I right? think y'all ain't because Ryan said something about. Cut the pickles up, man. <laughs> in jail, like you got a lot of sprints cutting pickles up, right? And I know you can watch you do it. I've been there with you. How many people in this room had to put in a request for them to get a new ID because they broke it cutting up? Come <laughs> <laughs> right. Y'all gonna be like, I know y'all can believe this shit, y'all probably will do it right after this tape so. But um look, we're gonna wrap this thing up, man, because really I mainly just wanted to focus on like getting the guys support for like jobs and the potential of getting jobs and like, school and the other things that we're doing. But just out of curiosity, is anybody in here, because most of us in here are recidivists. We've been in jail more than once. Anybody in here ever acquired a jailhouse nickname? Oh. You. What's your nickname? Coach. <laughs> Coach is not his real name. You got it. You got it. Oh, Preacher Bud. Preacher Bud. <laughs> All right. I ain't no bad nickname. How'd you get that? Preacher Bud. Um, yeah, I um, had an experience, man, with the Lord. And, um, I used to teach Bible study, man, you know, and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I learned a lot of things in jail, you know, I mean, did a lot of study and did it, followed that, and I live it on the street to today. I teach Bible study in the ministry that I am now, so. Preach the man, Sean, we love Sean definitely. And y'all can see that on uh, YouTube, M3 Church. I'm That's why I get your video. <laughs> <laughs> you got another club this week? No, not this week. All right. You got a nickname? In jail? Yeah, I, I was nicknamed for a little while Pitbull because of my uh, hip anger problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why you gotta practice spiritual principles while you're in there because uh, I still have that problem a little bit today. It's gotten better, but um, it's not something to be proud of or anything. Like If you practice spiritual principles while you're in there, you don't have to worry about it while you're out here and get yourself a job. That's cool, man. Matt got locked up. When he was 18, he got two years, first time ever being in trouble, man. So, you know, when he came, he had this surfer boy haircut. He was, he was, looked like a freshman in high school. He still do. So, some people, you know, thought that they could talk to him any old kind of way, and Matt going about that. So, he called me Pip Bull, because he had a little fucking anger problem. But the good news is, anger problem, you back to see, he used to get these splotches on his eyes anytime he would feel offended or angry, and he don't splotch as much anymore. Anybody else say his nickname? They call me Mezzo. You have about a hundred of them, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Super Mike. Every week. Mm -hmm. one. Uh, <laughs> that's my alter ego, though. When I'm not doing things right, you know, that's who I'm acting like. Something like that. Yeah, for those of us that have been locked up with Mike before, man, we, depending on what kind of mood he's in, we'll call it something different. <laughs> Anybody else got just out of curiosity? You got one? We know you got one. Tell us the camera what it is. I hate it. Wait, no, no, it's, it's, it's all, it's all tell them what it is and tell them why. I gotta talk Gangsta to you. Grizzle! <laughs> <laughs> I think he made up a couple of them. And then, uh, what was funny is Ben the other night, he keeps on calling me Gal. Gal. <laughs> That's how I was just a big Gal. Gal, I had no idea he had a real name until like a month ago. Anybody that doesn't know it's hereditary type of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It is a good condition and we don't judge you for that. Um, Look, I basically, man, I just asked that man to let the people that's watching this tape know we're real life people. We're humans, we're not actors. We've been to jail, we got jailhouse nicknames and shit. We told y'all the jails we've been to. We've been to the Rise program, we've been to the Belief program in Richmond, we've been to the Richmond program in Monkey. We've got, you know, we've got some experience. We've been where you guys are at, and now we're here, man. It's pretty cool, right? I mean, it's cool. It is cool. cool. All right, so um, before we go, our time is up for the day, man. We'll do this again next week. Before we go, I just want to say that we are at 2300 Hatcher Memorial 
Baptist Church is doing some Baptist Church. Dunbar Road. 2300 Dunbar <laughs> Road in Richmond. And the, it's an organization here called the McShane Foundation. They're really nice enough to let us use this room, their film equipment, and they're going to provide the whole with these tapes. So um, if y'all want to come, man, when you get out, this is where it's at, 6 o'clock. We'd like to get here about quarter to 6 so that we can eat pizza and homemade cakes and all that stuff. But it's every Sunday from 6 to 7. And um, if you've been to jail and you're out, you qualify. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody for coming, man. And, uh, you know, we'll do it again next week, man. So whoever, which one of y'all want to come, man, bring your friends. Not just tonight, but we every night. You can check the meeting. Oh, y'all, if y'all want to go to meetings and get involved with 12 step program and stuff, man, there's so much stuff out there, man. You know, I mean, it's, it, you get enrichment alone, you got a lot of, you know, like inpatient organizations you can go to. And you can get that information from your, um, you know, people at your jail. But, uh, but um, you know, we welcome all the newcomers, man. Um, like I said, man, thank you, Samantha, Ashley, Ron, and Tyler for coming this week, man. We, we, I speak for myself. I'm really glad that y'all came this week, man. We're cool with each other. All right, well, we'll see y'all next week. All right. All right. Peace. Out. Thanks, Al. Hey, 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 really we got a great deal. We're going to have 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 a we, if we could let y'all in a circle, we would. Y'all won't watch out. Y'all don't leave it open. Well, we want to link up. We want to be touching. Because we're family. Come on, Sean. All right. Who we got? God, grant us serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, keep coming back. Works if you work, if you die, if you don't, so work and live. All right. Thanks, guys. That's right. <laughs>